So there seems to be a push um, on to us individuals, right? Like just the, the human populace to sort of take responsibility, right? Like they're so, sort of trying to say, listen, you need to use less, you need to um, drive less, you need to use less electricity. And this is sort of to get us used to thinking that, oh, it's, it's sort of our fault, our responsibility. Um, and all those things are good, right? However, you can't expect humans to just suddenly cut back, start using less. I don't think that that is actually the right approach or it is the right solution to the, the problem. I think it's sort of absurd. So while they're getting us into this mindset, you know, you're going to see more taxes come into play. You're going to see just weird, interesting things start to change and you're going to be really confused about it. They've already implemented a, a carbon tax in Canada, which people have to pay, right? And that's just one of the first steps. So as soon as we feel like it's our fault, we're going to be more compliant to paying these absurd taxes, where what the real issue is, is so much bigger. Because meanwhile, we can make positive changes as individuals, collectively, as a country, as a planet, there are so many things we could start doing to reduce carbon emissions. One big example is um, energy plants that use coal, that burn coal to create energy, right? I mean, that's that's insane that we are burning coal, releasing that much carbon into the atmosphere when there are alternatives. What's his name? Oliver Stone did a documentary about this recently. Nuclear. Yeah, nuclear, nuclear. <laughs> Right, it's pronounced nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's a Homer Simpson reference. Yeah. Oh fuck! Yeah, remember, he remember Homer works at a nuclear power plant. That's his job to make it safe. Remember, that's right. That's and he gets right. uh, he gets the little um the water the bird, and you fill it with water, and it 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 um periodically like leans over, and he puts it on his desk, and it does the job for him. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, dude, yo, shout out yeah, yeah, guy. though. That was such a great show. Oh, yeah, I, such and a nailed a bunch show. of stuff too. Um, quite the like, savants, really. But anyway, um, so yes, nuclear power, absolutely, guy. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, dude, like nuclear. New nu fuck. I'm like Homer Simpson now. Nuclear power. Yeah, is a great step in the right direction. I don't know if it's a solution, but nuclear power a um, few decades ago started getting a really bad rep. And this all started happening during the uh, atomic bomb era because atomic bombs are made with nuclear energy, right? And nuclear power plants, power plants sort of utilize nuclear fission in order to create energy, but it's being used in a different and much safer way. But there was a sort of push, political push before that was essentially initiated by um, other corporations like the oil companies and, and and whatnot to try and shut down nuclear power so they could continue with their exorbitant um, profits. And it got a lot of actors and celebrities and singers on board. They had a big festival and, you know, talking about how nuclear power is dangerous and bad. So essentially nuclear power got a really bad rep. It was misrepresented. So we actually kind of got away from that, which initiated more pollution, uh, essentially. So the documentary sort of covers that. You guys should go check it out. I think it's called Nuclear Now. And I'm not saying that nuclear power is a solution. I think innovation would be the best solution. You know, like the they're currently researching um, particle. No, they're colliding. What's it called when they collide particles? And they sort of like harness energy from that they're they're doing nuclear fusion or fission fission yeah is that essentially the yeah, same yeah that's thing? the that's the gold standard yeah that's the gold standard that's what they're trying to get to work and there's been a there have been some breakthroughs in that recently yeah um using magnets and a bunch of other cool stuff because it's become so hot you can't touch anything so they have to hold the reactions in place by magnetic fields and anyway it's very cool but we also have a giant nu nuclear reactor in the like you know that we're orbiting around which is the sun and um we leverage that all the time uh, 
you know, utilizing the sun's energy continuously, like plants utilize it. We you like, you know, everything on the planet is possible because of that. Um, but to, just to bring back to your point about, um, nuclear, right? So yes, there was a campaign to, um, sort of discredit it in a way and to make, make people very fearful of it, but it was, it was reinforced by two events, um, the Chernobyl and the Fukushima. So in Russia and in Japan, where the nuclear reactors, um, had cat catastrophic failures, right? And the, because of the power of nuclear, it can be both good and bad, right? Like we talk about this with, with everything. There is this duality, you know, like if something is sufficiently useful or powerful, it can be used for good or bad. It's the same as AI. It's the same as guns. It's the same as cars. It's the same as all of these different things, you know, knives really useful, but also can be very dangerous. You know, like it's the same thing. And we sort of focused on all the downsides of it and we got caught in like, you know, society as a whole kind of got caught in that trap. Now, um, if you look, you know, that you can see uh, it's globally right now, there were certain countries and certain regions that are um, shutting down their nuclear, nuclear power plants and they're transitioning into the green revolution. And there are other areas or um, regions in the planet where people are upregulating the construction of these things. And so even as a whole planet, we aren't just doing one thing. There, is, there are pockets that are doing different things. Nuclear fusion is for sure the gold standard. We haven't got it yet. But we do have nuclear technology that can produce, um, you know, a huge amounts of energy with way less environmental impact, provided that the safety measures are in place. Now, there have been a bunch of breakthroughs um, in reactor technology where they use um, salt baths and all sorts of different things that m dramatically reduce and minimize the po probability or possibility of, um, bad outcomes happening from a, from a reactor failure. Okay. So like it, it, it's all there, but again, it's that marketing campaign that either puts people on the side of it or against it. But I just wanted to yeah highlight the, the, um, it, you're right about the, the nuclear bombs. That was a big part of it. Um, and then the Fukushima and the Chernobyl, um, cat catastrophes that really put a bad taste in people's mouth. And then that was used to continue to poison the nuclear narrative. I think that's yeah, sort of what you were getting at. Yeah, no, uh, great point because I, I forgot about those um, two very, very important uh, details. And the documentary also covers how uh, both of those situations and how it wasn't, it was due to malpractice or irresponsible irresponsible known engineers. failure known failure points yeah like known failure points the fukushima one was because water came over a certain level but like you know they actually looked at the the possibility space it was it was a known possibility known probability that that could happen they just didn't necessarily prepare for it or account for it appropriately